Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your third Etmascript 6 tutorial, and in this video we're going to talk about the let keyword. Wow. Alright then, so Etmascript 6 gives us the let keyword to play around with, and what that does is basically allow us to create a variable with lexical scope, or local scope within a code block, if you like. So, to demonstrate this, I'll go through a couple of examples. First thing I want to do is just create a simple variable as we normally would, and I'll call this x. I'm just going to set that equal to 10. Then, down here, I'm going to log the value of x to the console. So, I'll say console.log x. And if we save this and refresh now, you're going to expect just 10 in the console, which we get. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is a simple if statement, and within here I'm going to check if x is over 5, which it is, right? So it's going to execute this code block right here. Then inside here, what I'm going to do is re-declare this variable var x equals 5, right? And then I'm going to save. So what we should expect now is to see, first of all, x is declared, and it's equal to 10. Then this will execute because x is greater than 5, and we're re defining x within this code block right here to be 5. So we should expect 5 to be logged out, right? Let's save and refresh, and we get that. Cool. So let's now change var to equal the let keyword. Save that and refresh. This time, it's 10. So this has not taken effect outside of the if statement. So this is what it means. We're creating a lexical scope, if you like, on this variable. So this change right here is only applied within this code block. We're saying let x equal 5 within the code block, right? And if we log x inside the code block, I'll say console.log, and I'll say inside, and then concatenate x. I'm just going to come down here and say outside, and concatenate x again, just so we don't mix them up. Press save now and refresh, and you can see inside the, uh, the code block, x is 5, and outside the code block, x is 10. So this let keyword right here is not overriding this global variable, it just has a local or lexical scope within this code block. That's what the let keyword lets us do, okay? So, let's just work through one more example. You can see on the right here, I've got these li tags, and if we go to the index file, you'll see this ul then four li tags, each with 0, 1, 2, and 3 inside it. So what I want to do is grab all of these li tags and store them in a variable. I'll do that. I'll call the variable items, and I'll set it equal to document.getElements by tag name, and the tag name I want is li. So that's going to get all of those li tags and store them in an array called items, yeah? Now what I want to do is loop through those items and attach a click event to each li tag. So to do that, I'm going to create a for loop, and this is how we normally do it, right? I'm going to say for var x equals 0 to begin with, for as long as x is less than items dot length. Then what I want to do is add x, sorry, x, add 1 to x each time around, okay? So each time around, I want to attach a click event to one of these items. So to do that, I need to grab the current item in the array. So that's just items, then the value of x, because that starts at 0. So item 0 will grab me the first one. And each time around, it's adding 1, so it's going to get each one in turn. And then add a click event to each one. So when this is clicked, we're going to do a little function, which is going to log to the console the value of x, all right? So I'll say console.log x. Now, what would you expect here? You'd think that every time we click on one of these, it's going to log either 0, 1, 2, or 3 to the console. That's what you'd think, right? Because each time around, x is incrementing by 1. So let's save that and refresh. And when I click the third one, I get 4. When I click the first one, I get 4 again. You can see it's doubled up by that too. Whichever one I click, I get 4. Now, why is this? The reason is because when we're declaring this variable right here to initialize it, we're making a global variable because remember, the var keyword ignores this code block. And we saw that in the previous example I showed you. Okay, so it's creating a variable which is global in scope. And I can demonstrate that by logging uh, console, if I can spell it, dot log, logging x to the console outside here. So if I save and refresh, you're going to see 4 in the console straight away without clicking anything. And that's because x has incremented each time around in this for loop, and the final result of it is x. So then by the time it gets here, 
x equals 4. All right. So what's happening is we're attaching these click events right here to each item. Yeah. And when we come to log this value of x to the console, when we click it, by that time, we have a global variable x, which is the value of 4. So it's finding that global variable and it's just outputting it to the screen and it's 4, right? So how do we get around this? This is where we can use the let keyword instead of the var keyword because now this is not going to create a global variable. The let keyword creates a variable with lexical scope inside this code block, right? So x is only valid in here. And I can also demonstrate that by logging um, x to the console down here, console.log x. And now if we save and refresh, we're going to see x is not defined, okay? So it's not creating that global x variable right here, just a local one within this code block. So now when we save and refresh, when we click one of these, I'll click the first one, we get zero, this one, one, and so forth. So now we get what we expect. So the reason is, is because when we're clicking on one of these now, when we come to log x to the console, it's not finding that global variable, which is now four because of all these um, kind of loops of this for loop. It's now finding the variable x at which point this event was attached, okay? Because it's only valid within this global, uh, within this local kind of code block. So that's how the let keyword works. It just creates a variable with local scope or, or a lexical scope within a code block, whereas the var keyword ignores this kind of code block, okay? So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave those down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like, and I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial.